Hello and welcome to the Alchemy Laboratory. Today we are going to get our extraction that has reached its second spin. Uh, first with the bone marrow, bone and, fle and calcined flesh, and then with the chicken feet that I had preserved. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I went ahead and remove the feet. You can see there's still particulates in there. I'm going to go ahead and filter it um, using a coffee filter. Um, there's probably more efficient ways of doing this, but this is the method I've been using for years with my tinctures and my honeys and all that, all my extractions. So, you know, I, I think it's pretty efficient, pretty simple. I like it. So it's going. I just run it through here until it fills up, or until I have emptied my jar, whichever one comes first. And we just let that percolate through there. As you can see, the ants are up there. Looks like we got most of our particulate out. What we have here is our menstruum is vinegar and that's all I use for this one. I've since uh, started adding uh, table salt uh, in moderately large amounts to my vinegar when extracting from the animal kingdom and the reason for that is because salt uh, breaks down protein and that's why I do that um, in case anybody was wondering. Um, if you're watching a lot of those cooking shows, um, they'll tell you, you know, not to add salt to your eggs while they're still raw, to add them after they've been cooked. And the reason for that is because if you add salt to your eggs, it'll begin to break the proteins down, and you won't get a fluffy egg. You'll get more of a flat kind of egg. And so the same concept applies here when, when it comes to extracting from fats, uh, when extracting from... Uh, most things in the animal kingdom, uh, minus bones, um, I like to add salt. Uh, this particular extraction didn't have salt because I began that this extraction before I began doing that. Um, but in my other extraction that we will be talking about later, I did do that. Now I would say, I will say, do not add salt if you are extracting from plants. Um, from the vegetable kingdom to be specific um, especially if uh, you are trying to extract salts uh, volatile salts from your plant because that will dilute your volatile salts because you when you end up um, when you end up evaporating the the water the menstruum to um, to extract your salts you're gonna end up extracting some of the table salt as well and you're not going to end up with a uh, pure product. Now, inevitably, I might reduce this, and that might be a problem. Well, not this one in particular, but it, inevitably. And that might be an issue, but this is mostly for experimentation, so the end result doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if, I do, if, if I do like the end result, I will redo this experiment in the future and try to be a little bit more... Um, specific and a little bit more analytical of it as opposed to just kind of eyeballing it as you can see it's almost done we do have some particulates up there I was gonna extra I was gonna filter it twice but I'm pretty I'm satisfied with the results here that's just a little bit on the jar I'm pretty satisfied with the end results so I think I'm gonna leave it at I'm gonna leave it there. I won't. I won't. Um, I won't filter it again. Now, I've been asked in the past if uh, working within the animal kingdom, um, if it smells gross or any, anything like that, and I think the answer is subjective. Um, I'll go ahead and answer it here for anybody who's wondering. Um, example here, this one right here. Um, the second extraction was chicken feet that I had preserved. Now the feet were partially cooked in the extraction in the preservation process, and then it's vinegar. So vinegar and cooked chicken feet. Does that smell gross to you? Uh, I don't know. I guess that depends on the individual. 
uh, I would say I would compare it to if you're do if you're extracting uh, if you're making a tincture using lavender and high proof uh, grain alcohol. Somebody asked, D "What does that smell like?" The answer is subjective. Do you like the smell of lavender? Do you do you like the smell of high grain alcohol? You know, some people might find it pleasant. Other people might not. Again, it's subjective. Um, I think with the animal kingdom, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more universal. I don't think I've never met anybody who likes the smell of, you know, rotten meat or any or decay or anything like that. So, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta suffer for your art. You know what I mean? So, in this case, I'm just working with simple things. Uh, bones, uh, mostly calcine. I try to make sure that I preserve all my material properly so it doesn't get rancid, it doesn't get rotten. All my material is well preserved. Um, and so I, I do have that. But like this one right here, this is just vinegar, salt, and rendered beef um, fat. So, I mean, it smells like you know beef drippings and vinegar you know it just all depends on your personal taste I suppose so this is where we've reached um, with this I'm gonna remove that so we're not distracted here let's go ahead and take a look at this in the light it's looking pretty cloudy I'm happy with the level of extraction here um, not bad at all you know, this experiment here that I'm making this um, this elixir that I'm trying to um, create produce whatever you want to call it, it it's all it's all experimentation it's all trial and error you know there's not very much out there in the way of animal alchemy anybody who's looked will tell you the same Yes, you do have Paracelsus, you do have a lot of ancient texts that do talk about the subject, but I find that a lot of those texts regarding the animal alchemy, they're, they're pretty symbolic, allegorical, philosophical, spiritual, very little to do with the actual physical aspect of it. And, if I mean, if you can find one that's a little bit more on the practical, physical side of it, you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, I'll be... You know, I'm, I'd, I'd be, I want to check it out out of sheer curiosity. Point me in a direction. Um, probably help me out. I might even bring it. I might even talk about it on the, on the show, uh, in a future video. But as it stands, I've yet to come across anything that I, from my, in my opinion, was symbolic, or et cetera, et cetera. So, that's what I think. Um, now, in my opinion, alchemy, there has to be a balance between physical and philosophical, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. I prefer the term philosophical, but you might see different. And with these old texts about the animal kingdom, they steer too far towards the spiritual, towards the philosophical. And while that's all fine and dandy, um, it doesn't leave for much in the way of learning the physical aspect of it.